A well-prepared site will provide the best conditions for your revegetation effort. This means getting in and doing your weed control early and choosing the type of soil preparation that best suits your site. Well, weed control is the most important thing with, with planting trees, particularly planting um, large areas of trees. And my aim is to get a cubic metre of soil, that by that, that is free of weeds. So all the moisture in that soil is available to the one little plant for the whole of summer. So if you do that, it should be taking off and it shouldn't need watering. The main thing is just to make sure that that's weed free. Now, especially with, with droughts and climate change, we're gonna really need good control of, of weeds because of that drying summer. And if you're planting large plants, you don't want to have to water thousands of plants. So if we do things properly first, it's better. Pre-planning is really important. If they're woody weeds or hard to kill weeds, they'll be, need to be done the year before. If they're annual weeds, you need to preferably stop them from seeding the year before. But just prior to planting, we'll be using a knockdown herbicide and I really recommend a pre-emergent herbicide as well. There's a few pre-emergent herbicides that are registered for use with native plants and trees. And that will stop any weeds germinating after you've actually planted for the next two or three months. And that's, that gets you into summer when things won't be germinating so much anyway. One of the key weeds that we find in the Northeast, particularly in higher rainfall areas, is Phalaris. So that's a winter growing and the Paspalum, which is a summer growing. And they are really hard to kill. And so again, you need to start the year before or months before when they're actively growing and, and give them a good knockdown and then expect to come back again and maybe even again because they are so, so tenacious. So people are a bit worried about putting a pre-emergent on. But remember that if you do things right and you actually get the tree going, that's the only time it will ever need to be done. It won't need to be done for the rest of the tree's life or for 20, 30, hundreds of years. Now in many instances, if they've had a good year, Second year weed controls might be needed. So the year after the plantation was put in. And, and it really is, is a difficult issue because you don't want to put weed aside on the plant. So we, I've, I've devised this little tube with a handle in it. And, and it's pretty easy just to walk along and put the tube over and then just spray around the outside and then just walk along to the next one. Deep ripping is a really important part of, of the, the tree growing, particularly on sites that have been farmed where there's compacted soils. It loosens up the soil and allows moisture and, and also the topsoil and the, and the nutrients to get right down into the soil. If it's done in about late autumn, late summer, autumn, when soils are fairly dry, they can actually crack and that cracking again allows any moisture that falls in the autumn and winter to actually get in and be stored down deep and we want the roots to get right down to that moisture. In the dry you do tend to get some large clods come up and so to make it a, a bit easier you can run over the top of the rip line just with the tractor tyre or with the tyre of a vehicle just to, to, to pack that down a little bit. If we rip wet when soils are really wet, particularly clay soils, you can get it actually a smoothing of the sides and it actually stops the roots penetration. So you don't want a, a smooth, smooth sided rip. You want the rip to be able to shatter the soil and break it up. When we're planning the revegetation area or remnant protection, we can look at different techniques for soil preparation. We don't necessarily want to uh, rip within a remnant because we can cause a lot of damage to the trees. So one of the alternatives to ripping with a tractor is to use a, an auger like this beside me. A lot of people tend to these days like the use of an auger, but the auger is really more valuable in amongst native vegetation where you just want you know, small holes. Whereas when you've got a larger area, ripping is really important. There's a couple of advantages with augering. You can get in too tight to get to your spots. The auger creates quite a nice big prepared soil patch, so you can get very, really good growth. Augering, you don't necessarily have to do weed control because you've got a large area that's been prepared. Once we've um, dug the hole, you can see the auger. We just fill the soil back in. 
around it. As you can see, we've got an area that's relatively clear of weeds. Just make a little shallow depression and then just plant as per normal. These small augers are really common these days and they're a great option if you want to plant into sort of steep or difficult sites like along stream sides and you can pre prepare a lot of holes fairly quickly. Using these small augers is much better than trying to use hand tools. Um, you get a nice well prepared hole and the plants do really well. This is an example of um, augering and the result you can get. This plant's about three months old, um, so you can see we've got really gro good growth because it's been, the soil depth from the augering is quite deep and broad, and it also, you don't necessarily need to use chemical control because the augering removes the weeds from around the plant. Ideally, your site preparation, especially weed control, should begin at least 12 months before seeding and planting, even earlier depending on the condition of the site. It's worth the effort to get the site preparation done right, which will only increase the success of your revegetation effort and reduce your site maintenance requirements over the longer term. And remember that if you need any help with your site preparation at any stage, don't hesitate to get in contact with us at the North East CMA or get in touch with your local land care group.